Let's now move on with our friend Ghost Corgi. So what we'll need to do is create a noise for the density. And again, as I mentioned before, we have this volume noise fog that we can use. As it sounds, you can use this on fog volumes and this will give you noise patterns within that fog volume. By default, it's going to add. And so what I like to do to see this a bit better is I'd like to set this to multiply. I like to change the remap ramp so that we have higher contrast like this. And let's also put in Corgi right here. That allows us to see exactly what that noise is doing and how big that noise is. And so the noise parameters on here act as anything else. I do love how fast this note is though. It's really, really fast to use. That's nice. And let's go here to our noise type. We have all kinds of different noises to pick from. So we can do the Whirly Cellular, F1 or F2 through F1. We can change the element size right here. There's all sorts of options. Let's also animate this noise. We'll say a pulse duration of 0.75. And let's go down to the post process and set a minimum of zero. Sometimes it is possible to get negative value, so I like setting that to zero just to play it safe. Once we have this, I'd like to take our original Corgi, VDB from Polygons, and subtract any sort of volume that's inside of this. So we only want to be left with the volume that's outside Ghost Corgi, right? So we have this guy, Fog VDB, set the size based on a reference VDB on the second input. So that's 0 0.05 now. And we can use a VDB combine to subtract these values. So there's the A, here's the B. We might need to switch this around, but let's say subtract. And actually that's pretty good right there. That will give us those values. Now, do be careful because when we subtract, we can go negative with these values. We can see that right here. So I also like to set down a volume wrangle. And what I'll say is that Corgi needs to be clamped so that the value has a minimum of zero and a maximum that's really, really high, something like that. Now, if we do a volume slice, we got rid of all of those negative values, which is really good. Okay, so this is like our exoskeleton, if you will. Once we have that, let's go back to our noise. We will change the element size until we have something we like. So maybe right around there. And we're multiplying against density right here. I don't want to multiply that much. Probably right there on the ramp is good. And let's actually bring this to about the center so that we have more of that effect showing through. So I just want something that's kind of a ghostly aura around Ghost Corgi. I think this does the trick just fine. Let's now set a null, which is our Corgi aura out. Now, there's one more node that I wanna show you that's kind of related to what we're doing here, but might as well just let you know about it. It's the VDB merge. This is again new to Houdini 19. What this does is it simplifies the options you find on the VDB combine SOP. This VDB combine can be really complicated. And for more information on that, check out the node Bible entry that I have on all these different settings. Uh, but there's just times where you want to simplify the whole process. You just want to add in a couple of uh, VDB volumes and not think about the collation or any of these complicated things. That's what the VDB merge is here for. So it's very limited in what you can do. We can add if it's a fog, or we can do an SDF union or intersection if it's an SDF. Now, I mentioned this collation before in the VDB combine entry, but this is basically asking you how you want to uh, divvy up different fields. If you want to combine them based on their name or their primitive number, or you want to just combine all of them, then that's what the collation is referring to. Uh, so anyway, I just want to point that out. We don't really need it in this situation. Um, I guess if you wanted to combine this exterior, this aura with the main Corgi, you can do that right there. So that's kind of nice, but I just want to show you that while we're here. 
I also want to add some motion blur to our Corgi aura. That will give him a very ghostly appearance. So, let's scatter some points. This is probably the easiest way to go about this. Scatter some points, turn off the relax iterations, and then we will rasterize these points with a random velocity. So, let's create a point velocity right here. Check that on. And if we turn on our trailing, which I believe is right there, we can say, keep the incoming and just add a curl noise. So we, had, we just basically have motion blur heading in random directions from this curl noise. We can turn up the swirl size a bit so we end up with something probably right around there. And then let's also take the offsets and say $t. And so I'll do that for X, Y, and Z. Turn up the turbulence one more notch, and there we go. We now have all of these different motion vectors ready to be rasterized for velocity. So let's set a volume rasterize attributes. This is exporting V. So we will rasterize V. Right there, go down to the bottom, get rid of this coverage attribute it's called density. Say normalize by clamp coverage. Coverage scale, let's say that this is 10. And then let's also take our particle scale down to maybe about 0.1, voxel size of about 0.1. And then we mess around with this filter until we just barely blur it out like that. Something that is fairly coarse in resolution is probably fine for this. So we'll just keep everything right there. And if we want to see what the velocity trails are doing, then all we need to do is set up this volume trail SOP. That will take points in a velocity volume. The velocity volume right now is plugged into the second input. I take the bounds of our rasterized attributes right here, turn that into a coarse fog VDB, scatter some points, and then that becomes the trails that you see right here. I want to show you what happens when we use a new Houdini 19 node called a volume noise vector. So instead of adjusting the velocity here on the point velocity, which I would still recommend is a good technique, you can also do all of that randomness after it's been rasterized with this volume noise vector. So here we have V by default. The main thing to watch out for though is depending on the noise type you select, the values may or may not go in the negative direction. So the way that you can tell this visually is if we take the amplitude up and you start noticing all the strands going in a diagonal direction like this. If you're noticing that, it's because of the fact that the values are going positive and they're not going in the negative direction. And so do watch out for that particular thing. If you change these noises, you got to be sure that those values are going in the negative direction when we're dealing with velocity. We can also say in the range values to specify a positive or a zero centered range value. And so this combined with the noise is going to have various effects. Again, for most noises, you probably want to be zero centered, but if you're not zero centered and you only have a positive noise you want to work with, then at least specify a minimum and a max. So you could say negative five and positive five, but again, I would still recommend just uh, you know sticking with the zero centered for most situations, and then a noise which isn't going to give you that diagonal direction. This can also be used for color. And so let's say we want to add some color volumes to this. Well, it's kind of the same idea. We can create a color attribute up here with our points, rasterize that color, and then perhaps add or multiply against those values. And so the two main reasons I see for using this volume noise vector is if you're trying to add a bit of variety to color or to velocity. Okay, so that sets us up for velocity really nicely. Now, there's one more node that I wanna show you guys that's really, really awesome. And I've saved, I think, what's probably the best for last year. Suppose the director comes to you and says, you know what, I love Ghost Corgi, but I don't want his little, you know, ghostly aura to be covering up his face. The audience loves Ghost Corgi's face, so we can't cover that up with a glow. Now, how would you go about this? You could take a VDB and try to use the VDB combined to multiply against all this, and you could try to 
do this and that. But there's a new node that's going to make the process super, super easy. It's called the volume fog adjust. It's not the noise, it's the adjust fog right here. So check this out. Now let's plug this into our fog, which is all the way up here. And well, there's a setting down here that I'll start with that fixes this whole issue. We can go to use this line and check this out. If we say line and then we multiply against the values and we change this to Corgi, look at that. We're using a line to mask off where the volume goes. How many times have you looked at the Houdini forms and seen somebody ask how to, you know, fade a volume over the course of its, you know, bounding box or something? Well, never fear, because now in Houdini 19, we have the ability to do just that, which is really, really awesome. Also, we have this radial, which allows us to do that within a radial radius. Radial radius, yeah. Fortunately, we have a remap ramp down here, and that will inverse the way that this is all multiplied. So if I want to only isolate this volume in a certain place, I can do so right there. And that's really, really cool. So it will give you these errors sometimes, but it seems to be doing all right. Anyway, that isolates the face right there. So we can then just inverse that. And there we go. Now we can have the ability to just have the aura feather out towards the body. As you can imagine, we can change this start and end position so that this is relative to a point on our Corgi's mesh. For right now, I'll just leave that up to you. I mean, we can just, you know, reference scene data, go back up to our Corgi, and then find some kind of point number that we like. So attributes, points, and we'll say position. And let's just take this point right here. Hit enter. And then all of a sudden, we go back down here. We have that locked onto his nose. And then with the end position, we can just copy, paste relative references, and then just add a little bit here in the Z. So let's just say plus one. And that will start drawing out that radius. If you don't want to do that, this actually works just at the same position as the start position. So we're just going to leave that be for right now. But you can adjust that however you want. I have found that if you try to then change to a different pattern type, it seems to be bugging out by sticking with the original pattern that radial that we had before. So watch out for that. Uh, it's a very simple fix. We just need to make a new note of that. So again, volume, fog, adjust. So for this constant, this will just add values to all the areas that are active. So yeah, there you go. That's what that does. We can also say random, and that will give us a random value for every single voxel. That might be nice for really high frequency detail. We can also say noise, and this is just a very quick noise. And we can say we want to multiply or take the maximum or the minimum, whatever it ends up being. So that's nice. We can say that we want to use a fog volume. And so with this fog volume, we can have another volume here called mask. And just to uh, do this real quick, let's say that we take a sphere and we make a volume real fast, VDP from polygons. And we will make this into a fog volume. So let's actually call that fog volume mask and combine that in right there. What this will now do is, as you can imagine, add in the values based off of that mask. So let's just add a sphere right there. That's what's happening. So we can scale up. And as you can see, the scales up only in the areas which intersect with the mask volume. And we can also offset this. And I'm not entirely sure what that offset's supposed to do, but there you go. If we select remap volume, we have to go down here to the source volume, specify Corgi. We can compute the range, which is really nice. And we can also clamp that to values or we can cycle values. 
And so we have Corgi right here. Let's say I want this to go from zero to 10. That will then remap that from zero to 10. We can turn up the amplitude right here. We can have a remap ramp. So the remap volume sounds just like it is. It's there to remap the values in some kind of way for clamping or for dictating a different range of values. And then lastly, we have this bounding box. And so that will, I believe, just multiply by the bounding box. So if we go, let's say in the Y direction, we can compute the range. So there's our bound min, bound max, and that will give us a fade upwards. In this case, we are adding, but again, we can multiply, we can do the minimum, the maximum, whatever you want to do to those values, this computes that in a specific direction. And that, my friends, is a brief tour of the new volume nodes with Houdini 19. I hope you enjoyed these lessons with Ghost Corgi, and for more fun adventures, check out cgforge.com. Thanks for watching.